I am, where else? On my way to work. Oh my God, it's cold. I thought it was gonna be warm today, but I guess this is warmer than it was. And I left my sunglasses um, in my other travel bag because truthfully I didn't completely unpack last night. I unpacked my makeup, my toothbrush, my house is such a mess. I have two readings uh, coming over Saturday night and I have to clean my house today when I get home. I cannot, cannot be seen like this. And I have to make, I have so much to do. I have to do my taxes. Don't you hate that? Like, I've got to do my taxes every year. I mean, some girls really like it at work. They're like, yeah, because they have like kids and stuff that they can claim and it's like this great thing. And for me, it's like scary time because I always owe and it's such a pain in my ass and I've got to do it though. So I have to get my taxes done. I have to, I don't know if I'll do that today. I was supposed to do it this weekend, but I'm not, I don't see how I'm gonna have time. I mean, maybe Saturday while I work. I don't know. Because Saturday night I have two readings. I wanted to go see Cinderella and review it because I'm really excited about seeing it, actually. There was another movie, and I can't remember the name of it, but it looked really good, too. Um, so I might have to go to a couple movies. I have to take this girl in for an oil change and a tune-up because I haven't done that. I was supposed to go back 220 so I'm late and um, I need to bring her back in and she needs like all kinds of little adjustments so I do think I'm gonna do that today. I, I have to go into work. I have to have my big meeting with my my guys for the stores and then I have to do payroll and then I can leave and after I leave I want to go to Ross because the grief counselor told us the coolest thing um, because both Tiso and Clarissa who both passed in my room they both um, had the same desk so now my girls are afraid of the desk <laughs> They're like, don't put anybody in the desk. So I'm like, all right. So it's just like the unlucky desk now. So um, the grief counselor suggested to us to put, ah, uh, that heat's too loud. Huh? It's cold. To put um, like a, basically like an altar, which I love. And I'm also going to bring some sage in on Monday and clean the room. But to, to bring um, like a box or something for both of those people who have passed you can write little stories or we can um, put pictures or whatever into the box and we're gonna keep that as like the altar of our room which like you know I think that's badass to have an altar in my freaking office because who lets you do that but I mean the grief cancer said it so <clears throat> Damn this, I think I have allergies because my voice goes in and out, in and out, in and out. Like it's not that bad this morning, but like yesterday it was like, and I end up sounding like this, ugh, I guess this is what old people go, <laughs> I don't like me at all because it's all these changes that aren't happening. And I know it's what I'm supposed to be doing. Like I get that I'm supposed to be going through these changes and I want to do it gracefully with the exception of my face. Cause that, and I'm going to take you with me. when I, Whatever I do to my face is going to be posted. Like fill or operations or whatever the hell I decide to do. But um, yeah, it's hard getting old because like stuff doesn't work as well as it used to and like I totally get that this is in life where I'm supposed to be and I'm I'm there healthily I'm healthy and you know but like just dumb shit's annoying like I want to do what I used to do you know I used to play tennis like three hours a day I would sit my boyfriend had uh, two tennis courts at his house and I lived there for like years years and years like over 10 years and so 
I would sit, I had my own lobster. A lobster's like a tennis ball machine because nobody gets up as early as I do and is like happy to run out into the weather to play tennis with me because they just weren't, all right? They weren't. I mean, in the afternoon they would, but I had to go to work. So at the time I didn't go to work until like one-ish. So I could, um, play tennis all morning and I did I did it so bad that I've torn up my like hip and they want to replace it but I'm scared to death so I won't let them do it but yeah like I have a it's called a labral I have like a torn labral I've been dealing with for like five years I'm in pain every freaking day but I'm scared I'm just not an operation kind of girl like I guess if one day they it has to happen because otherwise like other damage will happen then I'll do it so I just keep an eye on it and pro keep promising the doctor, yep, I'm going to do that next month. I know. Um, but, and also I would have to take off a ton of work and I, you see, like I work constantly. That is what I do. I like, I like my job. Like, I love what I do, mm, but I actually like this better. Like I used to be able to make all my money on the Psychic Friends Network. I think I'm rambling a little bit. But I used to make all my money on the Psychic Friends Network. And that was cool. Like, I made a great living. I raised kids on that. But, the other side to that is... So, I used to make all my money on the Psychic Friends Network. But, the, right after, like, it was like mid-90s. They took all the, <clears throat> they took all the money out of it. They said they dropped us down to like horrible rates, and you had to work like all these hours. And they got shady as shit. When I first started working at Psychic Friends Network, you had to get tested. Like they would test you to see how well you did in readings, and not just for a little while. Eight months it took me to get on Psychic Friends Network. Yeah, like they would call me in the middle of the day and say, okay, you know, in 20 minutes, you need to be ready to read this person. And you had to be in the 80 percentile or you didn't get to work there. I mean, it's that simple. So that made me feel really good about Psychic Friends Network because they really cared whether or not we were real psychics or had done this for a living or, or was capable. Okay, so this, and that company was actually called Infomercial. Okay, they were out of Baltimore. And before that, I had worked on the Kenny Kingston line. I don't even remember that. And before that, it was like Delta. I can't even remember the name of that one. So I worked on like three lines, but the longest that I worked on was Psychic Friends Network. I worked on them through their whole heyday. Anyway, you could make a decent living like really and it was I had little kids so it was at home plus I always had people I read to this day on the side you know and I obviously charge them for reading so that's how it worked for me I think it was like 1995 I'm gonna say infomercial got sold it sold to some guy in New York and all I knew about this guy was that he um, he had spent like the most money on a baseball like a signed baseball that anybody ever spent in their life he's like this rich dude and he thought he was gonna get rich see that's the difference infomercial was so strict on what you could do um, and I'm sorry information um, they did not want you to stay on the line more than 25 minutes at 20 minutes you heard a ding in your ear that meant like enough we don't want to take every penny of these people's money nor did they want you they wanted you to have return customers but not like where they called you back to back to back so there were all these warnings and setups so that didn't happen to people conversely the line got sold to this guy in New York and we got these papers in the mail that said um, we're going to put a new promotion like a we're going to put a new like 
preamble to all the calls. So when the call comes in, before when the call came in, it just rang in my house. Now it would ring and it would say, um, this is from Dayton, Ohio. It's raining there. It's this time of day. It's this many degrees. And they would say, use it to like prove that you're a psychic. And I was horrified. I was like, I spent my life like being on the up and up. And they absolutely took, and then they dropped our pay unbelievably. But I was so disgusted at what they had done. I knew so many of these psychics myself. And these were all very good psychics. Like these were, these weren't joke psychics. We were all tested and talked about. Then I got this packet from them that said, um, "Here are some of the key words you can use to get people to call you back over and over and over." What good is that if somebody has no phone? What good is it? I, it was horrifying. Like, we were all on the phone. My girlfriend, Dale, was uh, actually worked for Infomercial before me. And she called me. I mean, we were just horrified. We were like, doesn't this guy know it's unnecessary? Like, none of this is necessary. So, we tried it for a little while. And one by one, we all left. He goes to New York. He was in New York. He goes in there and like there's an article about him taking like all these women who worked on, who were on like welfare-ish, whatever, welfare. And he took them off welfare. He's like the hero. Took them off welfare and put them on a psychic line. They didn't know anything more about freaking card reading and astrology than my mother. It was unbelievable. It was horrifying like really horrifying because I thought I would do that the rest of my life. There were people, there were people that literally, um, that's all, you know, that's what they did for a living. And they were, they were stuck because there was nowhere really to go. The heyday of that had kind of fizzled out. Uh, nobody really caught on to connecting it to the internet, which they do now. And I actually went back to work for another psychic line a few years ago and they were based out of Paris, France. It took me like five weeks to get a check. They never answered the phone so that went out the window. And then there's another one that's actually pretty good and I don't remember the name. I worked on it for a short period of time. I just worked too much otherwise because by then I had gotten this job and I've been at this job since 97. We were just talking about that yesterday. So, um, you know, so I mean I just do what I do otherwise on the sly and in my daily life and whatnot. But um, there was another one where you could you can rate yourself. You can tell them how much. In other words, you can, whatever you want to make people pay for you, you can. And that one, actually, if, you know, there were people in there like, yeah, I want $7.99 a minute. Well, you didn't get many calls. But if you rated yourself pretty much in the middle, in the average, you got some calls. You got some people calling. And then once, you know, what it is is, once you they talk to you and it confirms who you are to them they'll call back like they'll call back you don't have to make them call back like want them to call back so often that it hurts them financially i mean i never wanted to do that and i was really upset with that psychic line and i don't even know how i got on this rant about psychic lines but that's what had happened to psychic friends network and so that's why I didn't work for him anymore. And it was kind of sad. I loved it. I loved it. I loved sitting in my house. They used to have these um, hours where the infomercial would run. And uh, if you worked those hours, you got more money. And they were like in the middle of the night. And I was like, I'm loving it. Like I would sit up at night and do readings. And I met so many 
unbelievably lovely people. And you gotta hold on. I gotta put air in my tires. It's acting wonky again. Hold on. So, um, yeah, so we were horrified about it. It was not fun that period of time just because we all cared so much about what we did and took real pride in it and to make it so cheap to cheapen it like that was not fun to go through at all so anyway um i don't even know how i got on a 900 rand <laughs> but now they're much better because oh that's what i was saying so um so now there's this uh, 900 line that's connected to the internet where you can go in and like pick the psychic. You can read all about them, that kind of thing. And then um, you pick who you wanna talk to and they actually put their own uh, amount of money that they want to, uh, it's almost like, well, I mean, we were all subcontractors, but it's a, like a real subcontractor thing where like, you tell them what the charge, how much you're going to pay to do it. Uh, how much you want them to pay to get a reading per minute. And then, of course, the company takes their their little piece of pie. And that's how it works. And they're really nice. Like, I've I worked on one for a while. I just had a really hard time doing both jobs. Like, the job I do now is so all-encompassing that um it was tough to continue the boat the two but if uh if and when i retire because now i'm of an age where you look at that stuff um if and when i retire i would probably go back to the line part-time and just work part-time anyway that's enough of me if you'd like to follow me down the rabbit hole that is my life, hit the button down below and subscribe. Give it a thumbs up if you like me ranting and raving. Sorry. And um, I will talk to you soon. Remember, manifest whatever you want. Put it in your heart. Put it in your thoughts. Put it in your mind. Believe it and you'll be it.